welcome to the City of Santa Cruz Wastewater Treatment Facility. Our team of 52 laboratory technicians, mechanics, electricians, sewer line crews, and licensed operators provides an essential quality of life service to the community while helping to reduce our city's carbon footprint. I'm Amanda Bird, here to show you how we treat 7 million gallons of wastewater each day with all natural processing that is environmentally friendly. The wastewater that arrives here is from homes and businesses. It comes from our community's sinks, showers, toilets, dishwashers, and washing machines. It includes grease from restaurants, waste from industrial processes such as rug cleaning, car washes, auto body shops, beauty salons, and food manufacturing and processing facilities. It is our job here at the plant to clean up this wastewater so that it is safe to put back into the natural water environment without causing harm to any living organism or ecosystem. Here is a sample of the wastewater as it arrives at the plant. This raw influent comes from both the city and the county, including UCSC, Live Oak, Capitola, Soquel, Aptos, and septic tank systems. As you can see, it has lots of floating debris. This is all garbage material that has to be removed before treating the wastewater. Otherwise, it will clog our pumps and pipes. Here is what we transform the wastewater into. This final effluent is the treated, clean, and disinfected wastewater that leaves our facility and travels through the outfall pipe to mix with the ocean. Our tour will show you the steps it takes for this transformation. Hello, I'm Dave Myers. I supervise 13 licensed operators who work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to ensure the treatment process is functioning smoothly. Our licenses are issued by the State Water Resources Control Board and are earned through time in the field, education, and standardized testing. This is our operations control room with our SCADA state-of-the-art computer system, which helps us monitor the treatment system around the clock, day and night. From SCADA, we can see the daily flows entering the treatment plant, which equipment is on or off, plus lots of other process information, including chemical feed rates and methane gas production rates. Here we are at the Headworks, where three trunk sewer lines and a main pressurized sewer line from the County Sanitation District feed raw sewage to our facility. We also accept sewage and grease delivered by septage hauling trucks that is dumped into the incoming flows here. To ensure proper treatment, we collect 24-hour composite samples to be analyzed by our environmental laboratory. Operators use the data to determine if each treatment train is working effectively and then make process adjustments as needed. From the headworks, the sewage flows underground about three stories below us into bar rake channels, signifying the beginning of primary treatment. Primary refers to mechanical treatment processes. There is not any biological treatment occurring yet. First, we must remove the trash from the wastewater. It is amazing what people will flush down their toilets. The only thing that should ever be flushed are human body waste and toilet paper. Toilet paper is regulated with strict product standards as it must degrade in water so as not to hurt the wastewater systems. All other waste items should be thrown in the trash, not down toilets. This includes wipes, even if the package states flushable. Kleenex, hair, dental floss, candy wrappers, paper towels, rags, and more. When people flush items like these, we must remove all that accumulated trash. If we didn't remove this material, it would clog the pumps and pipes, resulting in costly and labor-intensive repairs. We remove this trash with these bar rake machines. The sewage flows into channels and past a series of bars that catch it. This prevents the liquid from passing through and thereby increases the liquid level in the channel. Once the liquid level reaches a certain height, the bar rakes are automatically triggered. A large mechanism with comb-like teeth descends into the channel and rakes off the trash from the bar screens that are blocking the liquid flow. The trash then travels by conveyor belt to the grid hopper room. Here we are at the grid hopper where the trash ends up. In the industry, we refer to this material as rags and grit. Rags are cloth-like material, anything from pieces of clothing or those so-called flushable wipes. Those wipes are not biodegradable and therefore can clog your plumbing and city sewers. 
always remember that wipes belong in the trash. There are also two other piles of grit material here. Grit is made up of heavy solid materials that we can settle out of the sewage. Materials like rocks, gravel, sand, bone chips, seeds, eggshells, coffee grounds, and corn. We remove about 20,000 pounds of grit and rags each week. During storm events, there's even more. When I ask visitors if it smells here, they reply no. And this is wonderful, as I'm standing three feet above raw sewage, and this is the channel where the county sewer flows enter the treatment trains. The reason it doesn't smell right here or around this facility in general is because of our terrific odor control system. This little nozzle head next to me is spraying a water mist mixed with ozone into the enclosed foul air spaces. The ozone reaction dissolves the foul odors in the air. Here we are on top of the pre-aeration grit removal system. The sewage flows from both the city and the county enter the inlet channel here. Within this channel, we add industrial strength bleach and ferric chloride with more odor control treatment. After this, the wastewater flows into one of two pre-aeration grit tanks. Two tanks provide redundancy. Redundancy is a hallmark of a well-managed wastewater treatment facility as it guarantees we can continue full treatment if a piece of equipment fails by rotating in an alternate piece of equipment. These tanks lead the wastewater to flow in a circular motion, which allows for the grit material to settle to the bottom. From there, pumps remove the accumulated grit and send it over to the grit hopper room for final removal. We are now standing on top of the primary sedimentation structure. After grit removal, the wastewater ends up in one of these six basins. Currently, we are using three. The number of basins used is determined by the flow rates of sewage coming into the facility. During the winter months, when flows are higher, we will place more sedimentation basins in service. In the summer months, we take a few out of service as the flows decrease. Here's a sample of what the wastewater now looks like. Although the trash and heavy organic material have been removed, there is still a lot of suspended organic material which smells strongly of ammonia. We are still in primary treatment processes with mechanical treatment only. These primary sedimentation basins slow down the velocity of the wastewater and allow the heavy solids to sink to the bottom of the basins. There it clumps together to form what we call sludge. The floatable solids float to the surface of the basins. This recovered material is sent to the solids treatment process. As you can see, there are lots of solar panels on top of these tanks, and we have more on the solids dewatering building roof. These plus our electricity generating units allow us to create 70% of our own power. We purchase additionally needed electricity from a local power producer who also uses renewable sources. So a whopping 90% of all the power we use is generated from renewable resources. Here we are at our pump station. These large pumps turn on automatically when needed in times of high flows. In large storm events and king tides, we need these pumps to push against the ocean pressure. This is because our ocean outfall pipe is a gravity fed line. During storms and king tides, wave action and pressure prevent our facility's effluent from gravity flowing out. These pumps prevent the flows from backing up. Here's where we have the bulk chemical tanks to store the industrial bleach solution that we use for odor control and emergency disinfection. We can run through all three 5,000 gallon tanks of this sodium hypochlorite in one week. Inside this vault is the six foot diameter discharge pipe, which transports the treated effluent to the ocean outfall pipe. There are only 900 treatment facilities in California, so we pool our resources and function as support for one another during emergency situations. We are a regional wastewater treatment facility and we treat septic tank loads from homes that are not connected to a sanitary sewer system. We also share our ocean outfall pipe with Scotts Valley and accept their sludge. The landscape of the facility here is going uphill. This means we have to use pumps to get the sewage water into the secondary treatment train for biological system processes. 
large pumps send the water into active trickling filters where the microorganisms live. Here we are on top of our six trickling filters. We usually run two or three depending on hydraulic and organic loading rates. The flow pumped from downstairs comes up through the center column here. The hydraulic velocity of the water causes the distribution arms within the filters to rotate. The water then trickles over this honeycomb plastic media. A film of microorganisms naturally develops on the walls of the plastic media. The microorganisms present in the wastewater come from our own digestive systems. We've created optimal living conditions for them. These microorganisms consume the organic carbon present in the water as it trickles down through the honeycomb media. These microorganisms are the main workhorse for our facility, cleaning up the water for us. We make sure that these bugs have the perfect environment to thrive in, enough air, food, proper temperature, etc. Here's a sample of what the wastewater looks like now. This is called mixed liquor in the industry, although I assure you there isn't any alcohol here. The microorganisms are the brown material. Once the water exits the trickling filters mixed with sloughed off microorganism, the flow enters two solid contact tanks in a serpentine lazy river type of channel with diffused air pumped in on the bottom. The diffused air prevents the microorganisms from settling out and the gentle agitation allows them to bump into each other and stick in order to create larger clumps of material that will settle out easily in the next tank. All of the foul odors from the trickling filters are pumped over to these carbon scrubbers for foul air treatment. In an effort to be good neighbors, we have added extra Vapex units to help as well. These vessels hold activated carbon generated from coconut husks, which absorb the organic particles from the foul air before it is released into the environment. After the water leaves the solids contact tanks, it flows underneath the road and pops up again in the mixed liquor channel that feeds the secondary clarifiers. The flow goes through a splitter box and is evenly distributed into the clarifiers. We have a total of three and determine how many to use based on the amount of wastewater entering the facility. These clarifiers slow down the flow of the sloughed off microorganisms so that they settle to the bottom of the tank. This material is then sent to the solids treatment process. Any wasted material is pumped over to the sludge processing treatment train, while the clean water exits the tank and heads off for final disinfection. Our facility uses ultraviolet light to thoroughly disinfect the water before it is sent to an ocean outfall location about one mile offshore at a depth of 110 feet. The UV light disinfects by breaking down the cellular structure of any organisms, pathogens, and viruses that are present. This prevents them from reproducing. Not all of the treated water from this facility goes out to the ocean. We also recycle water for on-site use that feeds all of the hoses down here. We produce and consume an average of 150,000 gallons per day of recycled water with these small mixed media gravity filters you see behind me. The water going through these filters is pumped from the water exiting the secondary clarifiers prior to disinfection. Here you can see the recycled water, which we call tertiary effluent, as it marks the third step in wastewater treatment. We use this water for cleaning, mechanical seal water, heating water for our anaerobic digesters, and heating water for some of our buildings. This saves us a great deal in potable water use and cost. From these filters, the water heads into the bleach contact tank where sodium hypochlorite reacts with materials it contains. From this tank, the clean water is then pumped over to a holding tank, which feeds our facility use. And this concludes the path of the water through this system. Here we are at the gravity thickener tank, where solids collected from the primary portion of the plant are pumped. The circular tank to the right is a dissolved air flotation tank, where we send the lighter solids that are collected from the secondary side of the plant. We pump compressed air into the bottom of this tank, both of these tanks thicken up the sludge. The thickened sludge is pumped to our three anaerobic digesters here. We run two at a time. We have three for redundancy. Each of these anaerobic digesters holds about 1.5 million gallons of material. Each digester is fed 12 hours a day. These digesters function like our stomachs. 
The microorganisms living inside these tanks break down the organic material to produce methane gas, which creates much of our electricity. Here you can see a sample of the digested sludge. Inside this solids dewatering building, we take the sludge that has gone through anaerobic digestion and remove the water to produce class B biosolid. This material is referred to as cake in the industry. The class B biosolid is a dirt-like material that has a high concentration of nutrients and smells like musty dirt. It is used as a fertilizer on non-food crops or as topsoil at landfills. We produce about eight 25-ton trailers worth of biosolids each week. And these are our co-generating engines. The larger generator typically runs 24-7, 365 days a year and is capable of producing 820 kilowatts per hour. The smaller generator runs during peak power periods to offset our imported electricity costs. It can produce 470 kilowatts per hour. Each year, these generators save us about $1 million in electricity costs, which helps us keep sewer rates low for our customers. These engines are referred to as co-generating engines because we have two resources produced when they run, electricity and hot water. The water is used to keep the engines cool while they're running. We use it to maintain our anaerobic digester temperatures and to heat various buildings. This concludes our tour, but before we go, we'd like to brag a little. Our environmental stewardship, including energy efficiency, the reuse of biosolids, and reclaimed water has helped us win recognition as best in class facility in all of California. We have won numerous other awards and are also a US Environmental Protection Agency top green power partner for the on-site production of the energy we use. Our Santa Cruz wastewater treatment facility not only provides an essential quality of life service to the community, we help to reduce our city's carbon footprint and protect the environment we live in, as illustrated in our beautiful ocean-friendly mural. Thank, Thank you, you for spending, spending your time, time with us. us.